Afghanistan. Yes, good afternoon to everybody. Yeah, better than that, not really. Is leaf modification. Today we will study leaf modification. So, I already have explained you what is leaf modification. Modification means it is the one generally the leaf is green expanded portion which is dorsiventally compressed flat structure which is green in color, which perform the function of photosynthesis. It performs the very important function that is a photosynthesis, translocation of food, the food which is prepared from the, that is the uh, food, that is the, the food which is prepared in the leaf that will be sent to various parts of the plant through xylem and through phloem and also conduction of water for transpiration that is important one by giving cooling effect through xylem through stomata and also it performs the function of this very important one more is exchange of gases exchange of gases that is through stomata it can during the respiration during the for the photosynthesis it will absorb the co2 of the atmosphere and liberate the oxygen for respiration it again absorbs the oxygen and liberates carbon dioxide that will be, so that is the exchange of gases will be taking place in the so these are the very important functions of the leaf now other than that there are some leaves which perform extra additional functions those additional functions we call them as modifications they perform additional functions they are called as modifications so among the additional functions that i will give you the leaves that is the it is prepared. That is the what are the leaf modification, and also here some of the examples they have mentioned in your textbook about just they have given one pair of leaf modification. Some examples they explain, and some examples they are explained in the practical manual. Again, remaining one them they have they have mentioned in the exemplary book. Totally, there will be three books for your biology. The one is textbook. The second one is manual, practical manual. The third one is exemplary. Some of the example, the questions, how it will be asked in the CET, all those. The exemplary one. Now, the modifications, leaf modifications, among them, there are few that I will give today, which are, that is, the first one is leaf tendrils. Leaf tendrils. The second one, insectivorous plant. Insectivorous plants. The third one, photosynthesis, that is. Fleshy. The fourth photosynthesis. And the fifth one is leaf spines.
leaf spines. So the first one is leaf tendrils. Among them, the first one is leaf thrust. The examples. So this is a leaf modification which will be important for me. And CET, lithrus, that is complete leaf. The second one, pisum, that is leaflet. The third one, gloriosa. Leaf effects. Then the fourth one, <coughs> smilex. That is stipules. Now, in case of insect growth plants, we will have there are the, many are there, only four are in your syllabus. That is nepenthes. The second one, Utricularia. The third one, Drosira. The fourth one, Venus. Fly trap. So these are the four examples. Then in case of the fleshy leaves, that is storage. That is storage. The first one is alone. That is water. The second onion. That is onion. And garlic, that is food. So the next one is photosynthesis. The next one is photosynthesis. Acacia bellosilum, that is Australian acacia. Acacia. AWC. ACACIA. Australian Acacia. Acacia Melnozaila. That is the example. Just to the spelling I want to see. The 
CAC right. That is the next one is here Australia right, Australian Acacia. The second one that is here pre pure. The next one is Parkinsonia. That is secondary ratchets. Secondary ratchets. Then in the near spines, the first one is Zupus. That is stipules. The second one, dead palm, that is leaf effects. The third one, open shia. And asparagus. That is whole leaf. Yes. These are the modifications of the leaf. These are the modifications of the leaf. The first one is leaf tendril. In case of the leaf tendrils means that is for support. This is for support. And this is insectous plants. This is for nutrition. And this is for storage. That is for photosynthesis. It is, this is for protection. Photosynthesis within, that is metabolic physiological for vital functions. Now, one by one I will explain you. Just first I will explain among them maximum leaf flowers you have seen, no, sorry, leaves, your plants you have seen, they will be normal, they are there. Only few, you will, it is not possible, you can see in the Google also, you can, these days you can put it, because the, some plants they are absolutely, they are not available freely. And they will be there especially in the high altitude and also where there will be particular regions only, they are restricted. So now coming to the, the first one is, Leaf tendrils. Then what is meant by tendril? Tendril means that already I have explained you the a small out a long tubular or thread-like outgrowths which will be developed on the stem for mechanical support. So that in especially in case of the weak stem, where there are especially climbers and twiners which will be going along with the ground. So those in those such plants where the stem is very weak. And these plants, they develop a special structure. They develop a special structure. That special structure is long, elongated, thread-like structure, which is very sensitive and it will be coiled one. A coiled structure. So these tendrils usually, they help for, and immediately they will coil like spring. And whenever they come in contact with any supporting object, Either it may be plant or it may be any object for support. Immediately it coils around it. It spirals around it so that it can withstand, so that it can climb or it can grow further. So they are called, and it is very sensitive. Why is it sensitive? Because they have specific hormones are there that we will be studying in the growth and development, growth 
in the physiology of, and these hormones which are responsible for the quick growth they are very sensitive structures that is in tendrils here in case of the tendrils see this is in case of the tendril there are different types will be modified that is the in case of the lithrus lithrus andre chennagi bali red color idu bartare kempu bali irthara lithrus chenna chedigi chedigi bali antara la red color lal red color bali bartare kesari kesari kesar dal ante so that is in case of lithrus it is a wild uh, it is a wild variety next in case of the pisum here the entire leaf is modified into tendril entire leaf that we will show i will draw the figure later then in case of the pea pisum sativum that is pea already was growing so in case of pisum sativum the leaflets the compound leaf, leaflets are modified into tendrils and in case of the gloriosa of course gloriosa is a monocot usually it will be found in the rainy regions small plant here the leaf apex is forming into a tendril in case of the smilax of course smilax is very rare it will be found in the thick forest and here the stipules are modified into tendril now this are now in case of the insectivorous plants means the plant there are some plants they are heterotrophic in their nutrition all the plants they are autotrophic but there are some plants which are heterotrophic in nutrition so they will depend for the nutrition they will depend on the insects so among them there are four are there in your syllabus the first one is nepenthes that is pitcher plant the second one is utricularia that is called bladder worm the third one is drosera that is the drosera is a sendu plant then nepenthes it is a fly trap sorry in case of the venus fly trap so these are the four examples which are respond which they depend on the insects for their nutrition whenever they find so they trap the insects and they, they digest them so these are the different plants which are heterotrophic in nutrition so the, for that reason we call them as insectivorous plants insect the next one is fleshy leaves there are some leaves which are stores water they are they are for storage purpose among them the first one is aloe aloe vera where the water is stored in the leaf it is a thick fleshy structure where the water is the next one is onion and garlic this already has studied in the modification of stem as well as roots in the root contractile roots in the modification of the stem disc shape so they will have the onion where the food is stored that is the bulb these are all both are the bulbs these two are the bulbs onion and garlic the next one is photosynthesis of course you will be knowing that the leaf itself is meant for photosynthesis but in these examples the leaf per doesn't perform the photosynthesis but the here the petiole is developed into a leafy flat structure especially australian acacia that is called acacia mellonsilla in case of this botanical name in case of this acacia australian acacia it is a, a, a variety of bubble a type of bubble where the petiole is flat leafy structure which perform the function of photosynthesis that is the next one is parkinsonia it is a uh, this plant is a xerophytic in habit non secular xerophyte this is also xerophytic in habit both and here the secondary axis is photosynthetic one here the leaves are they fall down now i will we will discuss one by one later the next one in details with figures next to is the spines so this is for protection this is fleshy leaves that is the insectivorous leaves and then photosynthetic this and that is the leaf spine the leaf spine is there for protection spines means they are small outgrowth in the first class i have explained you that is in the earlier classes there are different types of structures are developed on the stem that is prickles spines and thorn thorn i have explained you so the prickles means they are just exogenous in origin they don't have any attachment there immediately they immediately they will be very superficial they outgrowth in the next spines are also is like that only they are also they are pointed structures they are spiny for the protection especially jujuba jujuba that is your indian plum bariyanu so here you will find these spines and in case of the date palm that already you are knowing palm plant leaf apex is modified 
into spine, hip. In case of open chain asparagus, these two already are studied in the stem modifications. There, the entire leaf is forming into spines to check the transpiration. So, these are the different examples which are meant for the modification of leaf. Now, among them, these are very important. It is there. And some of the examples they have, they have mentioned, but they didn't explain them in your book. And in the exemplary also, they are explained. Now, we will study one by one. The first one is leaf tendrils. The first lictus, leaf tendrils. Among them, the first one is lictus. That is, it is common as called as wild pea. The second one, pea, by some sativa. That is the pea. The third one, gloriosa. That is leaf tip. The fourth one, smile ass. That is stipules. I will draw the figure so that you can easily, and especially you have seen this, and Juriosa. Gloriosa, Gloriosa, let's try to see the example. Gloriosa, let's see. Litras, let's try to draw the figure. Thank you. 
Não sei se ele quer saber. Aí sabe. Não quer saber de trás. Interesse de pi.
Here the stipules are modified, they are the leafy like structures, they perform the function of photosynthesis in litrus. But here, but the entire leaf is forming into a tendril, it's a long elongated thread like structures which will be coiling near the object, nearing the object for the support to grow. So this is, these are the weak stem and these are the two stipules, that is called Leafy stipules are fully stipules. These are modified, and here the entire leaf is forming into entire leaf is forming into tendril. In case of the P, I some satyrom. In case of the P, here these are the stipules. They also perform the function of photosynthesis. And this is the compound leaf. So this is the stem with the main branches. Now the, the, these leaflets, the lower leaflets, they perform the function of photosynthesis. Whereas the upper younger leaflets they form into tendril. So here in case of the P. Now in case of the Gloriosa superga, that is a, a monocot plant. Here, here also the big stem. The leaf tip is modified, is, fall, is forming into a coil-like structure. It coils and it attaches to the supporting plant. Leaf, the they are opposite leaf. It's a monocot, of course. These leaves they are called as tendril. So the leaf tip is modified into tendril to have the support. Now, now next coming to the, this is the leaf. Here in case of the smilax also, of course the smilax which is usually it will be in the uh, Himalayan region and also it will be in the, of course in the 
or that is your evergreen forest i usually in case this my legs here the stipules are modified into tendrils it is also a big stem the stipules are modified into stem so this is the into a tendrils which help for the support growth of the plant so these are all the leaf tendrils now coming to the the next one is insectivorous plant so now we will explain about the insectivorous in case of the insectivorous plants the four examples that is next with that we will explain about the fleshy leaves fleshy leaves tomorrow because the fleshy leaves that is the one is aloe the second one is aloe vera the second one is onion the third one is garlic these examples are drawn the figure in case of aloe vera where the the that is the flesh is storage so this is a fleshy leaf fleshy leaf or thick fleshy leaf the leaf part is spiny next onion
Here now, these two. This is the storage of water, and these two storage of food. These two. Here, in case of the aloe vera, the stem is thick, fleshy. Sorry, the leaf is thin, thick kind of fleshy, and also this leaf, which stores the Water in the form of fish. It is a circular zero-pointing one, and here the margin is very and it is a spiny one. It's where the leaf modification for sure. It's a green in color, perform the function, but it stores the water in the form of fish. The next one is in case of the bulb. This is the bulb. In case of the onion, there is we call them already have explained you in the stem and also in the root also. So this is the concentric bulb. So that is a tunicated bulb. So all the here in case of the onion, there are two types of leaves are there. The one is leaf which will be aerial, which perform the function of photosynthesis, a green in color, which is tubular, tubular leaf. And the other leaf, another leaves which are colorless and they will be present on the stem. This stem is forming into a disc-shaped structure, and the nodes are there in a circular manner, in a round circular manner. And here on these nodes, because they are many in number, so all the leaves they are arranged in color. The leaves are colorless. They are arranged on the stem in a circular manner or in a concentric rings. In a concentric. So for that reason, it is called concentric bulbs also. So here the food, the, these leaves are colorless and they are fleshy, where the food is stored in these leaves, fleshy leaves, concentric leaves. And the terminal bud will be in the center, and you have the axillary bud also in the, when it becomes old. And at the nodal region, you find the adventitious roots, which are in a circular manner, and they are called contractors or they are called as pull roots. Now, in coming to in case of the garlic, it will be the same, but the difference between these two here also in the modification is a bulb. These are the bulb. One is the tunicated bulb, the other one is the scaly bulb. Why it is called scalable? Because the leaves are fleshy, the leaves are fleshy where the food is stored and the stem is having very less nodes. On the nodes, the stem, the leaves are arranged, the stem is also this shaped one and on the stem, these leaves are arranged, they are in a less in number, they are arranged in a circular manner and they are fleshy, fleshy leaves. In the center, you find the terminal part, from where both the cases, here, the inflorescence axis, that is, we call them as scape. Escape is developed from a hollow 
scape will be developed after its maturity it will have the number of flowers of the food so this is about the storage of food in case of the scaly bulb and predicated bulb so this finishes the the next one that is the about the storage now next we will we'll go for the next we will go for the storage is over insectivorous leaves very important insectivorous plants here in case of the insectivorous plants these plants are called as insect insectivorous plants kitahari sashagalu you might have studied in your high school kitahari sashagalu means which will depending on the insects so first one is the the first one is apenthes that is called pitcher plant the other one is eutycleria eutycleria c u t l e r i a that is bladder wort wort the first one is nepenthes especially these two plants i'll explain you in kannada alli kuchi gida ro antara bladder wort and this is very common it will be found in the very common eutic area it is in the stagnant and dirty water it is very common that is polluted water especially in case in, the, in polluted stagnant water you find the you treat it very common that is a blood of water now you draw the figure
Now, coming to the Nepenthes first. In case of Nepenthes, here is a pitcher plant. It depends upon the insects, so for its nutrition. Here, the leaf is modified into a, in, into a pitcher-like structure. We call them as, it is a leaf lamina. The petiole is modified and it, it is a flat structure which is very thick and modified into a tender-like structure. Then the, at the tip portion, then the, this is the petiole. And this petiole, which will be holding the entire leaf picture, about four to six inches in their length, about four to six inches in their length, about four to six inches in their length. And usually this plant, it will be found in the North Indian region, where the nitrogen is very less in content in the soil. And moreover, the leaf lamina is modified to a picture and the leaf apex is modified into a lid. It is having this rolled and formed into a lid like structure. This lid, which will be always kept open, which is variously colored usually, and it is the lid inside, it will have the gland dotted one, glanded sticky substance. The glands will stick the sticky substances here. And this is the margin, this is the rim of the lid. Rim of the Mouth, mouth of the picture, there is a the rim, it will have the hairs, the mucilage hairs which are bent towards the inside. So these are very slippery in nature and it will be bent inside the rim. And whenever the insect will be attracted, the insects whenever they come near each other and it will be attracted by the, this leaf and immediately when it sits, lies on the rim of the picture, immediately these is which are very slippery and they are bent downwards and immediately that leaf falls down and the lid closes completely. The lid closes. And then inside the picture, various enzymes, the various protein, the enzyme, nutritive enzyme, that is a catalytic enzyme should be present. Those enzymes, they digest the entire insect. After the digesting, again, this lid again it opens. To trap the next the other seed. So just five minutes, two minutes. The next example that is the bladder word. In case of the bladder word, in case of the bladder word, which is usually it will be found in the I have told you in the stagnant water, the stem which will be above the surface of water. And where you find the branches, all the branches you smile, you find a small knot like structure about 2 to 3 millimeter in their diameter. 2 to 3 millimeter in their diameter. And this is the stalk which is attached. This is the stalk. And the bladder which will be having a small opening. This is called as the mouth of the bladder, which will be completely governed by the sensitive hairs, which will be bent out to outside, outside of the water and immediately they are very sensitive. They secrete various secretory substances. When the insects come in contact with this, immediately these hairs they bend and then immediately the door opens, these insects they bend inside the inside the bladder and close it. And after the digestion of the end, because here also in this bladder, the various enzymes which are present in this bladder, those enzymes they digest the insect. And then afterwards, again, after the digestion, once again, the, these hairs, they come out and they will be lying freely in the water. So, and further to trap the next insect. This finishes the insect first plan. In the next class, tomorrow, in the next class, again, remaining things we'll discuss. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you.